Thanks, man. Really appreciate what you're doing for the coaching community. I've called you, you're the MVP of uh, coaching COVID-19 here. So thanks for hosting us. Uh, any of you here this morning who are joining, um, who are supposed to be on that call Wednesday, uh, sorry, that technical issue with that uh, organization putting that thing on. So my apologies there. But guys, shield punt, we're going to go through this. I've got kind of a clinic style PowerPoint we're going to show first. And then we're going to, uh, I don't know, 30, 35 minutes kind of walking through through the, through the system. And then we will uh, end, this, end this seminar by watching a bunch of video on, uh, on Huddle, okay? So that's what we'll do. I know that's where the nuts and bolts is. Uh, and we'll wrap this thing up. If you do have questions as we go, either save them for the end or, uh, or alert coach and he'll take care of it. There's my contact information. Guys, so you don't have to go crazy writing all this down, I've also got it this whole presentation I've got as a PDF, okay? So that way, again, you don't have to go crazy writing this stuff down. Go download that PDF, go to coach4.org, okay? Top left-hand side, you're gonna see this article. Now, I'm getting guys all the time hit me up for, you know, hey, I just took over as a special teams coordinator, like this message says here. Uh, you got any information you wanna share? I've been so tired of uh, <laughs> trying to link to you know, all these articles. I've written a ton on special teams. I love special teams. Been a head coach in Southern California here for eight years. All eight of those years, I was special teams coordinator. And I've been a special teams coordinator, I think, for 12 or 13 years total. But uh, what I did, guys, is I linked, I put all my resources in one spot. So go to coach4.org, okay? And then go to this special teams article, top left-hand side. Scroll all the way down on this article, scroll all the way down and you'll see a link right to the PDF of this, of this talk, all right? So that way you'll, uh, you'll be able to, you know, maybe just listen a little more. So again, that's where you find it. Guys, my website, eightlaces.org. Anybody here today hearing this? My shield punt, uh, my book, which is a PDF. It's a PDF you get for seven bucks, okay? So seven bucks, that's gonna be running all today. Go on there, get the shield punt. If you like hard copy book, I got this book for sale on there too. Some other resources as well. And then both of these things, seven bucks today, guys. My kicking game manual, I've got 28 uh, kick returns, punt returns, punt blocks in there. Uh, again, $7, you get a bunch of kick returns, punt returns, uh, go there as well. All right, I wanted to hit on special teams philosophy. I went to junior college level in 2017 for the first time ever. Head coach called me to talk special teams. It's like two doors down from my house, literally this junior college, Victor Valley Junior College, two doors down from my house. Hey, let's come talk some special teams. We talked special teams with the head coach for three hours. And he offered me a special teams coordinator position. I had to take it. I was always curious about, uh, you know, a junior college level, wanting to do that. And so we established, you know, from the get-go, our philosophy there was to be fierce, fast, and ferocious. So the of, uh, three Fs, just hitting that thing all the time. And then you got to define that stuff for the kids. So I would show this slide every single Monday in our meetings. Okay, fierce, powerful intensity out there. Fast, short time to get there. Ferocious, be aggressively determined. And that's what I hit on more than anything. My special teams over the years, we've been able to get our kids to play ferocious. One, the passion I bring to it, I think, is big time. They know it's important. They know I love it. And then also we, you know, we call them out on, on their mistakes. We praise them for their efforts. I have a special teams player of the year system that I use. And I think I link, yeah, that's linked on that um, article I have where I explain exactly how we do that. Giving kids points, taking kids points away to come up with a special teams player of the week and a special teams player of the year. But you got to develop that philosophy. Steal this one if you want to. Okay. And you got to bring kids to this every single Monday. Uh, and in that, uh, there's a way I, I stole this from Texas A&M, a way to kind of rank your special teams. The coordinator there, Jeff Banks, who's now at Alabama, I think is the best guy in the nation. And he showed this, and I loved it. But this kind of shows you in 2017, we were you know, tied for third ranking-wise in our league. Uh, but as you see over here, our league, you know, we were fifth place in the league. We were one and four. In our league, special teams wise, we we're third place. Pretty pr pretty proud of that. Led the conference in field goal percentage. Um, you know, second in punt. 
Uh, so we, we were pretty proud of the fact that the fifth place team was third place in, in the special teams battle. I, I've used this system for 14 years, guys. Uh, the shield punt has become real popular the last seven or eight years. I put this thing in in 2002. I read an article called Dare to be Different, the shield punt. And I'm a diff I, I always like thinking, you know, contrarily, if that's a word. But I always like thinking uh, a little different, a little outside the box. And that, that title got me. And I think it was, it was used in an Ivy League school. I've tried to find that article for years. I, I haven't been able to find it. But uh, Dare to be Different, it was in an old AFCA magazine. And we put this thing in in 2002, okay? I keep tremendous stats. Since 2002, I coached for 14 seasons. We have 440 punts. 440 punts there and just three blocked since 2002. Uh, and then just one return for a touchdown, that was 2006. Calvary Chapel Marietta returned a punt on me uh, for a touchdown. But I think pretty good stats. You'll see our best season, 2016, uh, where we had 40 punts and we allowed six return yards. One return yard was one of the, we had, we had two kids who had positive return yards one for six yard, or sorry, one for five yards, and then one for one yard. My second bus, 38 punts for just allowed 14 yards. That was in 2015. So we've gotten those things better every year. 2017 at the junior college level, 44 punts, 140 return yards allowed, zero block, zero touchdown, and we got two turnovers over it. And you see here, here's all the returns that year. So if it's marked zero, that means the kid actually tried. So these are all the attempted returns out of 40 punts. Uh, big, some big ones here, man. These things make me sick. These things make me sick right here. But, you know, I love seeing a zero, 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 one, three. We love those. At the junior college level, a kid attempting to return a punt gets at that zero level. We like that. And then we had negative ones, too, which I didn't put on here because these were just a positive return. My, my punter was an all-conference punter, which was awesome. The high school level last time, I, or this was 2014. The, big, the reason I had this stat up here, guys, is I took over as a special teams coordinator at this school here locally, Oak Hills. We decreased the punt return yards by 85% in one year. Okay, so my first year there, 2014, we decreased the punt return yards. That's, that's a ton of yardage, guys. That is a ton of yardage. Uh, well, we only allowed 40 return yards, you'll see here, 40 return yards decreased it by 85 percent and we also set a school record for the punts inside the 20. All right so 2001 I was using the punt pro scheme you know the pro punt style scheme a lot of folks use and again I just wasn't happy with it. Six disadvantages of that of that traditional punt that I see. Open field tackling very tough to do okay uh, with the shield punt you're getting guys down the field a lot quicker and they're a lot closer to that ball carrier. Usually in the pro style punt, you got two guys trying to make an open field tackle. Tough to do. Five usually, usually, right, in that pro style system, five pretty useless linemen after the kick. At least that's how we were doing it back in 2001. I know that's changed a little bit. Again, you got just two real tacklers getting down the field. Number four, fourth disadvantage, return team can bring – they can bring eight guys at you usually. Uh – Number five, if the returner's faster than your gunners, you're going to lose field position. When, when you're using that pro-style scheme, sending just two guys down, okay, uh, your, your likelihood that you're going to be slower than one of those two guys is, is pretty good a lot of times. And if one of those guys gets blocked, you know, now you're screwed even more. So, uh, you know, one of the reasons that I, I spent two hours on the phone with a Jacksonville Jaguars special teams coordinator – uh, it was probably about 2013 because the NFL was thinking about changing some of their rules up. And he was looking into the shield punt, found me online, reached out to me. And uh, it was pretty neat talking with him. One of the things, they're not allowed to use any kind of system except for sending two guys down automatically. Well, I, obviously, it's a safety thing. But I also think one of the reasons is that punt returns are pretty exciting play. And uh, I think it's a little more than just safety because otherwise they would have changed it years and years ago, I think, but before, um, you know, safety was as big of an issue. But, uh, you know, when you send seven guys down right away, like this system does, it takes away any kind of real estate for them to make any big gains. 
Uh, then number six, the angles of the punt team creates automatic advantage if they return to the sideline specifically. So, again, just sending those two guys down, like a lot of teams do, the pro-style punt, um, you know, the angles of the field create an automatic advantage if they go to si a sideline return away from one of your returners. If you're just joining me late, instead of writing all this down, I've got this whole thing as a PDF. Go to coach4.org, top left-hand corner, article I just put together about special teams. Scroll all the way down, save this as a PDF. All right, so this is your shield punt setup, okay? Let's get our language right. I refer to the right, this guy here. Obviously, we're kicking away. Uh, this is R1, R2, R3. So your guard tackle tight end, R1, R2, R3, because it's on the right side, obviously. L1, L2, L3. There's one yard separating, one yard difference in each of these guys, okay? From the center to the right guard, one yard, one yard, one yard, one yard. We'll get into those splits in a second. And then we talk about uh, our shield is labeled S1, 2, and 3. Left to right, just like we read, S1, S2, S3. If my punter is right-footed, you're going to see some film with a left-footed punter I had. But if my punter's right-footed, okay, I'm going to set two guys here. Now, they're all going to come together, okay? They're all going to come behind the center. But for, you know, for a lot of reasons, right foot, I'm going to offset my S2 to the right. Left-footed punter, I'll offset S2 and just bounce the shield this way, okay? The advantages of the shield punt. Number one, the biggest advantage, you guys have all seen it nowadays, but you, you're going to get guys down the field very, very fast. Guys, chased, okay, we're being chased by the punt return team because we got angles and leverage on them to get in front. You're not going to reach – again, another one here, high school level. I got, I got six unblocked guys all behind uh, – looks like Apple Valley, my hometown school here – all behind their returner, their return team. I got six guys unblocked, ready to bear down on this returner before he even catches the ball. I love punt team turnovers. Um, you know, nothing better than getting those punt teams. So you're going to get guys down the field fast. It's a simple formation used everywhere on the field. We'll talk about that. We'll show some video. Guys, a lot of, a lot of dudes are, are switching it up when they get down inside their, their – uh, there we go. Down inside their five, down inside their ten. They, they switch it up. And I think what happens – I know what happens because I've talked to coaches over the years. You know, I consult a lot of coaches on this thing at the high school and, and smaller college level, a couple of Division I coaches. But what you'll get, guys, is, is people start changing up the rules on you or, or coaches start changing up the rules on their kids when they get inside the 10. They start freaking out a little bit. Once you change those rules up on your kids and players, these splits here are horrible. That's a bad split, bad split. But uh, when you start changing up those rules, that's how you confuse your own kids and then you start getting blocked, okay? So we're going to stay We're gonna stay the same. The only thing you got to do when you're inside your 10 is you got to – move your shield up and again we'll talk about that in a little bit but yeah coach go ahead yeah I got a couple questions here coach um <clears throat> are, are the shield guys your best athletes outside of the gunners great question we'll I'm going to save that because we're going to get into it in a minute and then the other one here uh have you ever played around with a rugby kick or having the punter wait a second to kick if they aren't bringing pressure nope I have not ever played around with the rugby kick um couple reasons why coach one I like to keep my special teams my, especially my kickoff and punt. Look, we I, at the junior college level, I, I had 15 minutes a day, okay? 15 minutes a day to do two special teams is not very long, not very long. High school level, when I was, you know, just a special teams coordinator, I sometimes I got 20 minutes a day. Worked for one coach who said take all the time you need. But, uh, you know, usually I had 15, 20 minutes a day to do two special teams. I just haven't found that um, there's enough benefit in it. I've seen some great rugby stuff, but I'll be honest with you, man. When I see rugby punter, I, I don't ever sit back and just let guy, let him, let them have their way. I attack the heck out of him as a punt return guy. Um, I have not allowed much success as a punt return team, as a special teams coordinator, defending the rugby punt. I go right after that guy from the edge. I, I people have never had success against me with their rugby style kick. Cause I just attack the heck I'll attack them with two guys. So um, I, I don't, I don't like this scheme, but I know it's popular. I know guys have success with it, but I've never done it. It just doesn't fit my philosophy. And I'm a real big believer that you find your philosophy and you use it. 
you make it work for you instead of trying to go with something that's cool and new. So that's kind of my, my answer there, coach. Okay. But uh, so I've never done it. Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. I just found it doesn't work for me. Uh, so this is what the scheme looks like. We'll get into it in a second. So another advantage, uh, very difficult to block, very difficult. Showed you stats on that. Guys, you know, one thing you'll start seeing, I talked to, I can't remember, some coaches in the Midwest the other day where there's only like two teams in the state using it, okay? And they're one of them. They bought all my stuff last year. They're one of them. They had tremendous success with it this year. He said, man, coach, I, every, every, people were throwing everything at me. And that's what happens is if it's not used a lot around you, if teams aren't used to defending it, that's the one disadvantage. You'll see all kinds of different looks coming at you. Uh, that's why it's just so important to teach your kids exactly how to do it. It doesn't matter how they're ever – it never matters how they're lined up, and we'll get into that, okay? But you'll see a lot of different looks when you first start using this thing or if it's not used a lot in your league or what have you. But uh, it's, it's very difficult to block, okay? Uh, bring 10 guys. Had this, you know, get guys a long time ago. Used to bring 10 guys at it. I don't get that as much anymore. But, uh, you know, bring, bring 10 guys at me. That's fine. I, I during the uh, – during uh, we'll watch this clip first. It's close, baby. It's close. But you're not going to block it with even 10 guys, okay? Again, it's pretty close. But now you bring all 10, your dude is going to probably fumble a ball, okay? So, uh, bring, bring all 10. That's fine, okay? Uh, again, very difficult to block. A lot, there's a lot more fake options, okay? A lot more fake options out of it, I think, because you have that shield. You got the front line seven. Uh, my PDF has, I think, 10 fakes in there, okay? That's one thing you get with that, 10 different fake looks. But I think there's more options in your traditional uh, punt. The disadvantage, let's talk about the downside of the shield punt. You'll see one of these on the film I'll show a bad snap, okay? Obviously, right there, you just saw those 10 dudes coming. And I'll get that every now and then. Um, in fact, when I put this thing in during training camp, I'll bring 13 guys, 14 guys out on the defense. I do that for a few reasons. One, I, I prove to my shield punt team, and I don't do that for a few days, a few, maybe another, a week. I don't do that until I feel great about it. But I want to give my guys a ton of confidence and I want to show them, I don't care if they bring 10. I don't care if they bring 11. Uh, we're, you guys have done a great job putting this in. So I'll bring 13 guys at them. It's just a physics thing, guys. There's not enough room to bring 10 guys, 13 guys. Um, and so, but I'll do that to try to build up some confidence in our dudes and show them, hey, you know it, you're, you're doing great. So a bad snap, okay? If, if you get a bad snap, you're, you're screwed because as you just saw in that film, uh, you know, we, we release those. We don't block at the line of scrimmage, okay? So those guys are going to be through, and, and you're going to be screwed. Personnel, guys, I like to use, you know, we just talked had a personnel question, okay, and we'll get into that more. But we, we use defensive guys on this, and so that could make them tired on, you know, that first snap on D if you don't personnel out stuff, you know, the right way and sit down and really, you know, some schools, I, I've been out of school 17 kids on our roster before, uh, you know, everybody's playing almost the whole game, small school football. So there's sometimes you can't avoid that, okay? Uh, at the, you know, junior college level, we we're, were lucky enough, at least early in the season, to start three deep everywhere. But that third line is usually pretty useless. Uh, so you can have your guys tired on defense. A shanked kick, that's happened every now and then, where we, I call it out coveraging the kick, okay? Because those front line seven guys get down there so fast. And now if you shank a kick, if you, you know, don't punt it very far sometime, now you've out coverage the kick and, and it could put you in a bad spot. And then if you're backed up. Now, if they bring all 11, and I don't know why more teams don't do this, to be honest with you. I think you should put in, and it's something I've done, if a team's backed up, let them kick it. Bring all 11 at them. Okay, but a lot of guys want to set up for the return. And, and one reason is the shield punt's so stinging hard to – to block but you know if you are backed up inside your 10 and they bring all 11 it could give you some problems but again I don't see a lot of schools doing that to be honest okay there's a again there's there's a look of our being backed up I mean we're on the four yard line 
All I do is move my shield punt team up. And again, we'll get into that with some film. Personnel wise, we had a personnel question. And again, if you have any questions, just ask Coach G there. He'll jump in and ask me or save them till the end. Frontline seven guys. I call it the frontline seven, okay? That right up here, that L3, L2, L1, your long snapper, obviously, you might not have choices there. R1, R2, R3. Your frontline seven guys, your linebacker safety type kids, okay? Corners, if they're, you know, if they're big. I, I like, I think the, the, what, what you're looking for more on that frontline seven, your best tacklers, okay? And then your best guys to get down the field. Those two type of dudes. I've had an offensive guard who also played some linebacker play on this frontline seven because the kid could move and he could tackle, okay? But your frontline seven, linebacker safety type kids, your shield, S1, S2, S3, I put big dudes, big dudes who can block. I want my biggest guys in that shield, my longest guys in that shield. At Oak Hills a couple years ago, we had a big, big dude, I don't know, 6'4", uh, went to play out in Texas at a school, Division One school. Um, uh, I had, you know, he was a defensive lineman. I had him back there at uh, at Victor Valley College, this junior college, a couple years ago. You'll see some footage. Um, you know, a backup center was probably our biggest guy on the on the team. Um, he was our S two coach. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, there's a question here, just in regards to uh, the shield and why you make the guys slide as opposed to uh, like hinging in. I don't like the fact that you can't see the, the long snapper. You can't see the snap. So I know, again, that's a real popular thing to do. You have them, you know, lined up behind like S3 and have them hinge. Um, that, so one thing, and you'll see some because my head coach at, at the college here wanted him to do that. So you'll see some film where we did do that. Again, guys, I'm a big believer on your philosophy. And I don't like him not being able to see the snap for one. For two, it could screw up some fakes that you might have. For three, here's the biggest, the most important reason when when I and this was a change I made um, in 2002 when I put this in. I uh, where I learned it from the coach I learned it from did not have his guys doing this, but I want their mentality, the shield. I want their mindset to be aggressive. Okay, and so I used to line them up at their heels at seven. And then I wanted them to take one yard, one step up and into about the six. One yard, come together. And again, in their mindset, they're not just receiving this blow, okay? They are delivering one. So that's why I like them being aggressive and stepping forward. That's my, again, my philosophy. That's what I like. So that's why I don't have the hinge, guys. But I, I think it's important to create in them a mindset, hey, snap of the ball, I'm stepping forward. I'm not just receiving this thing. I'm stepping forward to deliver a blow. And then there was just another question, Coach, in regards to the uh, uh, bad snapping. Um, is there any specific uh, long snapping drills you'll work? Um, I do, yeah, I, I do. And, again, I've got it on that. Um, I've got some video and pictures on those articles I put together, coachfor.org, all those resources. I got one called the bad snap drill, guys, where I'll line my kids up on the, on the yard lines, you know. Um, so I stand, like, on the sideline. And and they're they're lining up on the line, and I'll 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 give we we'll practice every single day with my kickers. I practice bad snaps. Okay, so usually it's like a one bouncer to them. And one of the things we do is I tell them get I'll 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 do bad snaps on the ground so they get used to they get used to catching that bad snap. And then I'll do high ones too. I'll do ones to the left. I'll do ones to the right. But it, it, I do. It's called a bad snap drill. In fact, I put it out on uh, Max Preps a little while ago. So if you Google just coach for bad snap drill. You'll see how I do that. But what I do is I do it so they, they get the snap and then try hard to get right back on that line so they're right behind the shield. All right. So, again, um, this is what, you know, my chart will look like. I'll show this literally on, uh, you know, on our, our Monday meetings to show what our, our three deep type thing looks like. This is how I break up the coaching assignments, guys. I got four coaches. I understand some of your programs. You might not be able to do this. I've been in that boat before. I wasn't able to, you know, have four coaches coach this bad boy. But uh, I like one coach coaching the left side of the line, one coach coaching the right side of the line. So you got, you know, a one to three ratio. 
this coach becomes very, very good at this left side, knowing what to look for. And then one coach coaching the shield, and then one coach coaching your long snapper and punter. That was usually always me. I don't like, you know, every freaking coach on the sidelines talks to your kickers on Friday nights. Nothing pisses me off more. If there's head coaches here, listen, if there's head coaches here, shut up all your backpack coaches that show up. You like that? Some of you are backpack coaches. Take those backpack coaches off. Coach football. Some of you are backpack coaches. You love showing up on Friday night, and you're a kicking coach all of a sudden. Head coaches, stop that crap, man. Knock that off because you're getting in the heads of these kickers. Stop allowing every single freaking coach to coach your kickers on Friday night. I think it's the dumbest thing in the world to do. So shut all those guys up, okay? I'm serious about that. I, nothing frustrates me more than as a special teams coordinator when you don't show up Monday, Tuesday, you know, you show up one or two days a week and maybe you can't, you know, maybe you truly can't be there every day. And I appreciate that. Some have extra jobs. They get there when they can, but it ticks me off when guys come out and they all want to talk to the kicker Friday night when he does something wrong, shut your mouths off my soapbox. All right. Coaching assignments. I like, uh, I like everybody coaching from this side of the ball. This, this guy here coached my R3s. He was a DC. He just, he, uh, he liked coaching from that side. So, so he did, but I like, I like coaching from this behind him. Okay. So he coached R123. My shield coach over here is my running backs coach. He coached the shield. This is me here coaching my long snapper punter. And then my defensive backs coach secondary, great coach, coach Mike Benson. He coached the left side of the line. So this is us at Victor Valley College putting this thing in. And that's how we divided up the coaching responsibilities. All right, let's talk about alignment. I think this is a really good picture for that alignment. Again, one of the mistakes I'm seeing at the college level, I study the heck out of this thing, guys. And every time there's a block punt, you know, nowadays I get a lot of guys sending it to me, asking how it happened, that sort of thing. This punt is very technical, very, very technical. And when you, you see a lot of guys, especially at the high school level, who throw this punt in without taking the time to really teach it, and that's how it usually gets blocked. Um, but, when, guys, if you open up these gaps bigger than one yard, you are creating a lot more possibilities to get yourself blocked. So there's guys who have these huge splits. Again, um, it works for some guys. It's not who I am, so I don't do it. My, my splits are one yard. This looks pretty good. That's about one yard. That looks like about one yard. This looks about one yard. This looks – this these splits look really, really good. He might be a little tight here and here, but these splits look really good, okay? So one yard, you'll see the type of guys I have here. Linebacker, 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 okay? Uh, defensive back, defensive back. Uh, this was actually a running back over here, but probably the best athlete on our team. Coach. Um, do you have uh, coaching assignments for all special teams? Or yes, I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Like on kickoff, we'll go three guys on kickoff. One guy's coaching the fives on the left side. One guy's coaching the five on the right side. One guy's coaching my kicker. Uh, you know, on punt return, I'll have a guy coaching the D-line, guy coaching linebackers, guy coaching – I try to go four to every special team. But, guys, here's, here's what happens realistically. Here's what happens. You know it. If your head coach is not bought into it, full-fledged, if your head coach is not coaching part of that special teams, what usually happens is that first couple weeks of training camp, everybody's bought in, everybody's coaching their position, and by week two, it's one guy trying to corral 75, okay? That's what happens. If the head coach doesn't have buy-in, and guys, there's no better way you're going to get your, off, your special teams to play tremendous than by getting all your coaches to stink and buy into that thing and coach up all the kids. I don't know why more programs don't do it. I don't know. When, again, at, when I was a head coach, every one of our coaches was coaching. There's nobody BSing on the sidelines. But what I've seen over the years working for different head coaches, if, if you get a guy who doesn't buy into this thing and mandate every coach coaching special teams, then by week two – most of your coaches are BSing on the sidelines together in a group of five or six. And you special teams coordinators out there, you feel my pain right now. You know what I'm talking about. You five or six guys talking BS and grab ass and over on the side. And you got one guy trying to coach 
the punt team and holding up the cards, trying to coach the punt return team. And it's a nightmare. And then no wonder it doesn't go well Friday or Saturday. Okay. I'm very passionate about splitting up the coaching duties. Back to alignment. Okay. Again, I used to have heels at seven, like my first, I don't know, five or six years of doing this. Now I have heels at six for my shield punt team. My heels are at six and they're stepping up one yard to five. We try to get them to step up one yard. Now, I've also messed around, and one of the things my, my head coach at Victor Valley College, and I, 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 agree, I came to agree with him, instead of having them step up, he wanted them just to line up at five or just line up at six and just come together. But I like them lining up at six, heels at six, stepping one yard up and in to come together, and then my, my punter heels at 14, okay? So shield, punt, shields lining up, heels at six, Punch your heels at seven, one yard in between. Now, the rule for where these guys line up. My S1, his right foot, S1's right foot needs to be a little closer. He's about five inches off. His right foot is all right on the, the left foot of the long snapper, okay? So he should be right about here to be better. Might be the angle of the camera, I don't know. But his right foot on my long snapper's left foot. My S2, his left foot, on my long snapper's right foot, okay? That's where we wanna go alignment wise. And then the two shield guys together are gonna to be just foot to foot, right next to each other, okay? Now the idea is the, sense, the S2 is gonna, should end up right, right directly behind your sensor, okay? That's alignment, that's what we're looking at. Again, there it is from the side. You'll see here how this big old boy right in the middle, I loved him there big big boy in the middle okay and you'll see what the alignment looks like there another alignment high school level now this is my left footed kicker i had in 14 i've had two left footed punters over the years and again that's what you're going to do you're going to just shift those that shield over so now his left foot is on the the long snapper's right foot his right foot is on long snapper's left foot. These guys, that's one yard it looks like there, but, but he's, he's, R1 is too close there. Guys, this, the splits are critical, and we'll get into that in a minute. All right, front line seven guys. Again, uh, just pictures from some kids I had years ago. This is a stance they're going to be in. If you remember, all, if you know Bill Williams here in Southern California, runs a football coaches professional growth association. He talks about the hip position, hands in your holsters. This is how my frontline seven guys are, okay? This guy was not a football player. He was friends of these two, so his stance is crap. Ignore him. But this is my shield. I, lo I love how S1 and S3 look here. A great hip position, hands in the holsters, ready to hit somebody, okay? Again, there you go. That's what my stance should look like for everybody on the field except for long snapper, Except for the long snapper and a punter, every guy on the field is in a good hip position, hands in the holsters. Every single, all frontline seven guys, all shield guys, same stance, okay? Now, if you huddle, if you huddle, a lot of team, I stopped huddling. Um, you know, I, nowadays we go right out to the football, okay? But when I did huddle, here's how I huddle, okay? And one of the things I, and I think it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good reasons to huddle. One of those is putting in a fake. One of those, I love being able to control the tempo. Don't let the defense control the tempo. But also, during your practice week, as you get them together to talk to them, it's, you want to usually try to do that in a huddle type of format somehow. So this is how I huddle, okay? My S2 is, kind of, is my captain for my team. I always send in the call with my S2, <clears throat> never with my punter, because I always like my punter getting out there and getting set, not worrying about it. So my S2 is my captain of this team. I always have S1 will go out. He'll get his heels at six yards from that football. So we set the huddle on S1. He gets his heels at six yards, and then we set the huddle right off of him. Okay, so that's high huddle. Snapping the football, let's talk about that quickly. My S2, again, he's my voice. He's going to make sure the front line is set first. So he can see the front line, obviously. He's going to make sure they're all set. Then he's going to turn around. He's going to look at the punter. 
He's going to make sure the punter is set and ready to go. I've got this in there twice because it's so important. I've had one time, and I, it only happened once. I, I, I made an adjustment. It's never happened again. But early on, 2003, four, somewhere back then, I had my, my, my S2. I didn't coach him right. It was my fault. He didn't turn around and look at my punter. He just saw the shield, the front line seven was ready. And he said, ready, ready, snapped the ball. My punter wasn't ready. He was trying to get his, foot, his feet right. So it gets snapped, hits my punter right in the nuts, um, and, you know, it screwed us up there. So S2 is going to turn around. He's going to look at the punter. He's going to point at it. This is what I did. I've done now. I installed it. He points at him, and then the punter points back at him like, yep, I'm ready to go. Not audio because I don't want the punter going, hold on, hold on. And S2 thinks he said go. Okay, so they point at each other, make sure they're ready. The punter nods and points to S2 when he's ready. Then S2 says, ready, ready, to prepare for the snap. And the ball then is snapped on the punter's hands. Now, I sometimes I'll go on the first snap. A lot of times, though, I tell my, my long snapper and my punter, they're the only two who know what it's going to be on, first, second, or third snap. Because if you do a good job scouting this stuff and you teach your kids, hey, they're going to snap it on the first go every time. That's one way to jump punts as a punt return guy. Okay, so vary that up on when, when you're going to snap it. After the snap, snap, your steps have to be perfect. Okay, I'm going to zoom through teaching this here because I want to get to the film to show it a little better. All right, this he got here. And this is why your steps are so stinging important. I put together YouTube, and again, my YouTube channel, go to eight, YouTube 8 Laces. Some of you guys here today, you're only watching this so you can figure out how to block this thing. I'll give away the secret. The best way to block the shield punt, your biggest threat to be aware of, is the second man in a C gap. A, B, C gap. Your second man in a C gap. He, this is your best way to block this thing. And again, I break it down on my YouTube channel pretty good. And I show how this kid right here, he almost blocked this thing and thing. Okay. What happens is if this man here attacks and attacks your, your R2 and does a good job occupying him. Okay. Cause our steps, he's going here. He's going here. Whenever there's two guys in a gap, we're supposed to run around the second guy, the widest guy. Okay. You want to run around the widest guy and then filter him to your shield. But if this man here, if he occupies your, your R2 good enough, he comes in unblocked and he, he's too wide of that, that, that shield. I do not allow my shield to chase guys. Okay. Again, part of my philosophy and why I've been very good. They never are going to chase anybody. They're going to let them go. The shield is only going to hit somebody. If you can reach them, you reach them. But once you start chasing guys, you're going to get it blocked up the middle. So your steps, this here, he's way too close. Okay, that's not one yard. So he has poor alignment and poor steps. Again, we're going to get to the field here. Okay, so again, after the snap, the first step, 440 punts, three of them blocked. Why? All three times I've had them blocked, 2002, my S3, my shield, did not step up and in. 2007, my R3 had no right foot step. 2014, S2 did not step up and in. And I'll show you a clip of that. Okay, so this alignment is where it all starts. You're gonna, I'll show you a clip of that. After the snap, the first step, so think of yourself here. We're on the left-hand side, L1, L2, L3. After the snap, snap, your first step is a one foot step, one foot with your left foot, you're taking a step to the left, a flat parallel to the line of scrimmage step with your left foot. If you're on the right side, it's gonna be, if you're on the right side, it's gonna be a one foot step with your right foot. That step is critical to stop the rush in your assigned gap. The shield is coming together one yard up and in. Okay, the second step. So the first step, parallel 
line of scrimmage, left, if you're on the left side, left foot, one foot step with your left foot. Your right foot is doing what we call a banana step. So his foot was here, his foot was here. Now you're gonna banana step it, okay? And that, again, you'll see footage on how we do it. That is so you are ripping through your guy, through the man in your zone. So you're gonna go left and then a banana step with that right foot, okay? So again, this left foot get parallel and then the right foot is starting to get upfield. And that's where you should look. This, when, we, when we put this in, we'll go first step, set, go. And they just take one step with their left foot. Set, go. One step with the left foot. Reset. Set, go. We just start teaching those steps, man, like crazy. We'll do 30 steps a day. Just train that body. Left foot, left foot, left foot. Just that first step, okay? Again, my coach teaching left side does it with his kids. My coach teaching right side does it with his kids. After the second step, this is what you should look like. Now you're getting upfield with that banana step with the right foot if you're on the left side. Banana step with the left foot if you're on the right side. Okay, after the snap, the third step. So left step, parallel. Next step, starting to get upfield. You're ripping through the guy with that banana step. Your third step, get up the field. Get up the field and go. The shield, third step. There is no third step. It's one, two, come together, one yard up and in. Hold your water, now you're blocking. The third step for the front line, get up the field, okay? Let's talk about the responsibility. Here's where, this is, the, this is the most important thing on this, guys. This is where coaches screw it up all the time. All the time because they don't know what they're doing. Some of it, they just haven't paid attention. So many coaches are not technical enough with it. And this is how you get things blocked, okay? Now, getting off the line of scrimmage. So let's talk about the responsibility of L2 because it's the same with L1, L2, L3. It's the same on the other side with R1, R2, R3, okay? Here's, here's the secret sauce. Anybody, let's again, put yourself in the, in the feet of that left tackle, just as our example. Again, it's the same rule for the left guard, same rule for the left tight end, same rules on the right-hand side. Getting off the line of scrimmage, okay? Anybody, head up, head up of me or inside to the football. Head up or inside, I am not touching. I do not care about him. Anybody, again, the rule, anybody, head up or inside, I don't care about. Head up or inside, I don't care about. He's being funneled to the shield or to my partner right next to me, okay? So when you look at L2, red means don't block them. Red is no. Head up or inside, don't touch them. Who's going to block this kid here? L1 is going to be blocking this kid. So L2 is going to get any of these. Really, guys, there's only four positions he could line up in, okay? Outside shade, outside shoulder, right next to there, and then all the way over to directly, again, remember, one yard split, head up of L3 is the responsibility of L2. Guys, you can only get, you can only fit two people into each gap, right? So you're not going to have four guys there. You can only fit two. So you might have one here on the outside shade and then one head up of L3. That is your toughest look. Because again, the rule is if there's two guys in your gap, and your I call this a blocking zone, your zone. If there's two guys in your zone, you want to try hard to run around, at least collide the second man in your zone. Okay. But if there's only one guy, it's uh, you're you're colliding with them on the way to the football. Coach, what's up? Two questions here, Coach. Um, <clears throat> any advantages or disadvantages to having man assignments for your front line? Yeah, there is. It's confusing. Hate man assignments. Don't do it. A lot of guys, again, guys, I can't emphasize enough. Find what works for you and do it, okay? A lot of coaches number guys. They number them from the outside, 4 three, two, one, number them from the inside. College, some of the college coaches I've talked to gets very confusing. 
they have a lot more time than we do at the high school level, okay? But when you number guys, what happens when they twist? What happens when they bring linebackers up at the last possible second? All that stuff, you eliminate a lot of confusion if you use this system where it's a zone blocking system. That's why I don't number. What's the other one, Coach? Um, how does L2 get to the defender above L3 if he's only taking a, a one-foot step in a, in a one-yard gap? You'll see on film. Hard to explain. <laughs> You'll see on film. You'll see it on film. And then a uh, question was asked before just in regards to the punter steps. What do you have in the, the punter steps? The, the what? The punter, his, his steps. Okay, so the puncher steps, uh, there's, there's so much out there on, on how to teach your punter. Is he stepping with his kick foot? At the end of the day, I want my puncher to be comfortable. So I had a guy the other day asking why my punter was stepping with the wrong foot um, because he wanted to and he felt comfortable doing that. And he's playing college football now. So I, I, don't, I want my punter comfortable, okay? I want him hopefully one-two kick um, is what I want him doing. One-two kick, one-two kick, one-two kick. Okay, that's what I want him doing. But, uh, uh, okay, the, so the question on how you get here, if there's three foot – if there's three feet here, one yard, and he's only stepping with one, that second step is what is what is what you need to do to get around him. Okay, you are taking that banana step to rip through him. And again, you'll see some on film. Okay, so this is that whole left side of the line. Okay, shows you exactly who you are responsible for. So again, any of these four guys. Now this L1 here. That should be lined up right, right above them. But I also wanted to show the red, the red L2. Okay. So again, L2. Anybody head up or inside, I'm not blocking. Okay. Now out here to the edge on L3, L4, L3 has to play pretend like there's an imaginary L4. So if he's lined up any wider than this, there's no way he'll ever block it. I don't ever want you to even touch him. Okay. But I, I got to get get moving here. Again, download this whole thing, coachfor.org, top left-hand side article. Download this whole thing so you have it, and then you can use this to teach your kids, okay? So, again, L1, yes, yes, that's a man in your zone. Yes, man in your zone. Yes, man in your zone. Yes, man in your zone, okay? So, again, we talked about if there's two in your zone, you get this look right here. My right tackle, my R2 should be getting around this man here, okay? Anytime there's two in your zone, you want to try hard to get around the second man. The college level, those guys are so fast, it's next to impossible to get around them, but there better be a stinking collision there. There better be a collision. You cannot let him go free. At least get two hands on him if there's two guys in your zone. All you got to do is push him off there, guys. Delay him for 0.5 a second, that snap's going to be gone, okay? My shield, again, they're never going to chase. So my S1 in the shield, as long as he can block them with his arm extended, he'll block them. But I never want my shield guys chasing, ever. That's when you open up holes and get blocked up the middle. Okay, now, one of the things we've seen in the last five years is teams bringing two guys in each A-gap, okay? Two guys in each A-gap. The way, the way to combat that, you've got to use your center. You've got to use your long snapper. And I'll ask my long snapper, do you like blocking left or right after you snap, okay? And if, oh, I like blocking left, coach. Okay, then if there's four guys, right, two in each A-gap, he's blocking two, S1's blocking. Now it becomes a man. Now it becomes a man blocking scheme if there's two guys in each A-gap. And, again, I'll bring my long snapper and my shield, and we'll do this after practice. We'll practice this, okay? Let's talk about your coverage lanes. I'll show you a drill. So I like to put seven cones out as we teach it. Okay, move it over to the left hash, put seven cones out to teach it. Okay, so again, this is what you'll see. You'll see my cones out here. Those are my targets. So my, my, my left one, L1, left guard, there's his cone. Left tackle, there's his cone. Left tight end, there's his cone. And they're basically, guys, we teach it, we teach it, Five, about five yards apart from the ball carrier. So think about your ball carrier returner and then about five yards apart. I teach them, I want them to get very wide 
and then collapse on the football. So about those first, if you have a 40-yard punter, the first 20 yards, I want them getting very wide. So we cover the field and then collapsing, find the ball carrier and collapse on them, okay? Get to the ball carrier. All right, so let's watch now. Let's watch some film on this thing, okay? Coach, yeah, question? Yeah, there was a question <clears throat> in regards to uh, the steps again. Have you, ever, have you ever taught a bucket step to the front line guys to collision a guide wide in your gap? And what are your thoughts on the bucket step? Yeah, you do. Sometimes you do have to teach that. I have found that especially more at the college level where they're faster. You do have to teach them to take that bucket step if they can't get there. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. Um, I've taught it over the years. If you know going in like, hey, they're going to line up a guy head up of L2, L1. That's your only responsibility. I will teach that bucket step sometime. All right. So, it's, uh, Coach G, how much time do I got? Um, I mean, however you want to go, Coach. The next session uh, starts at 1. So, you got right, So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go like 15 more minutes here with the film and then, you know, yeah. questions. Yeah. All right. So, step two, getting off the football. You got a question? Uh, there's a couple that came in. Um, <clears throat> How far away from the returner uh, do you collapse? The, the, the uh, so, so, guys getting downfield collapse. On. Yeah, usually we'll teach it. We'll teach them to get to their cones. I'll put these cones out about 20 and then find the returner and go get them. That's how I teach it. That's how I teach it. Have you ever find, blocked? Find the returner and go get them after about 20 yards. Have you ever blocked one into two when getting two guys rushing a gap? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that too. Block one into two. I think mm -hmm. it, it, it just depends on, you know, you got to study. Yeah, you got to study, but that is something I teach also. If you can't get there, push, push one into two. It just depends on how fast the defense is. All right, so you'll see here getting off the ball. Okay, again, this is – this literally, guys, this is the very first day of putting this system in at the junior college level. Um, so we – this is my afternoon practice. We had put it in in the morning, okay, and then this is that afternoon. So you'll see, we don't have any gear on. This is literally the very first day we put this thing in. Um, and so you'll see my spacing down here is all pretty good. One yard splits all across. Again, first day of putting this thing in. You'll see my big boys here. Okay, these are all three of these guys are defensive linemen right here. All three of these dudes are defensive linemen. I like to have a little more height if I can get it. Um, down here you have our great offensive line coach. Coach Cheek is working with the offensive linemen down over here getting his work in. But you'll see my cones lined up here, and you'll see, you know, what we do here, getting off that football and then getting down to the cones. Awful job. Man, JC, it's hard to get these guys to do things the right way a lot of time, but that's what we're doing, okay? Lane discipline again. We put these cones out here as markers to, for them to get to their cones. And then, so you'll see here what we do, okay? is ideally ideally what they do is what these kids here did get to their cone chop their feet and then go off to the right that's how we start teaching this for the lane discipline okay get to your cone this kid does it perfect gets to its cone chop his feet to his cone chop his feet this idiot went past his cone he went to his feet and you see me yelling at him get off to the right now okay so we can get our next unit in. But that's how I start teaching it right there, guys. Okay? And then the next progression after that, you'll see here, we're going get, to get to the cone as a landmark, get to the cone as a landmark, and now go find your returner. Okay? So, again, that's the pretty clinic talk is setting out these cones. And, again, my high school guys do it a lot better than my junior college guys do. Junior college guys, I think they know everything. They don't need to do it. Okay? But we're going to run to this cone and then collapse on a returner. That's what we want to do. All right. So let's look at some film here and talk about good, the bad, the ugly. This here, a textbook look at it again. Okay. Now, we miss this guy. I want to show you. Remember I told you that second guy, okay, that second guy is hard to block sometimes. We totally miss this guy. It should be my R1 here. Okay, R1 should be getting around that second guy. There's two in his zone, one, two here. Okay, he doesn't do it. So let's watch why he doesn't do it. Why does he not get to him? 
poor, poor first step, right? Watch his first step. He gets beat. Poor first step. That's why he can't get to him. So we miss him, but he still can't block the football. He gets close, and I think if he sells out, if he dives, he probably blocks this thing. But outside of him, this is a textbook, and, and we got the penalty there, which I love, okay, because he, he does run into my kicker. We get the penalty first down. But this is pretty textbook outside of that, okay? There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere for the ball, the, the returner to go, and I think he maybe gets a half a yard there. We get down the – I think he probably loses a yard, to be honest with you. But we get down there. This is textbook. This is what it should look like once you get down that field. Okay, this guy here, this guy here, guys, we didn't talk about it. My three, my threes, my R3 here, he's my contained guy. He's, he does a good job of bouncing, taking that step out, make sure Coach Four better not see me get sucked in, and we'll show you sometimes. My R3 and my L3 should never make a tackle. They're making sure, and, and this he does a really good job here, okay? He does a really good job here. What I teach these guys, I don't want you turning your shoulders if you're my contain guy until you're even with the ball carrier. I never want my contain guys having to make a tackle, okay? And he does a good job there. He doesn't turn his shoulders all the way until he's even with them. Make sure he's inside of them. Let a teammate make that tackle, okay? So that, that's a pretty textbook outside of the one we missed. All right, I labeled all these, but it's starting early. What are we – block. All right, here's a block. Here's a block. This is Oak Hills High School 2014. Serrano High School does a great job. This kid right here was an all-state linebacker. He'll come through. You'll see he'll attack my shield. Now, my shield is lined up one yard too deep. My punter is about half a yard too close. That's one issue, okay? So you'll see, watch this kid here. Very poor first step. And that kid almost blocks it too. Boom. He does not rip around him. He's supposed to take this step here and then the banana step to rip around him. He's supposed to be ripping him. He doesn't do it. That's the number one place to get this thing blocked, guys, is off the edge. Okay? But this kid, he's a coward, I guess, right here. He's scared. And he doesn't take his step. All you got to do is rip through this guy. He ain't going to block it. Rip through him. He's not going to touch it, okay? But we let him come free. He almost blocks it. But where it gets blocked is right up the middle. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. Boom. Right up the middle, okay? Now, this kid here, backup quarterback. Backup quarterback we had in there for a specific reason, not game. But he's a big boy. He's a 6'4 kid. Backup quarterback. I, don't, I never had a backup quarterback in here again. Not since this play, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Although he's a big dude, okay? You'll see see him turn his body. I mean, he's scared. He's scared. This big linebacker pushes him, boom, right into the punter. Again, my shield was lined up one yard too deep. My punter was about half a yard too close. That's a disaster, okay? And so one of the changes I made here ever since then, my S2, his main responsibility was getting six yards off that football. So we never lined up that deep again. But this is one of my three blocks. They do a perfect job attacking. We kick it. You can see the ball go right into the back of that guy, okay? Because, again, they don't do a very good job. You'll see here they do a you know, decent job of stepping up and in, but it's not nearly enough. He turns his shoulders. They push him right into the kicker. Only time that's ever happened, getting pushed back right into it, and it's a disaster. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Good thing is we still win the game, beat them for a league championship for the first time ever. Luckily, it didn't impact the game. All right. Poor job, L2. And so I'm, I'm going to go through this film, guys, just teaching what our steps should look like. I think it's a good way to teach these things. L2, very poor step. Okay, and what you're going to see here, I've got back-to-back -back clips. This is the first game of the year. L2 does not take a good step, okay? Watch his step here. No good step there. And so because he doesn't have that good step, he, he's not able to rip through them, and we almost get this thing blocked. It all starts with that first step. This was a sophomore kid, really good linebacker. 
Boom. Doesn't take a good step. Almost get it blocked there. Okay. We don't get it blocked, which is a good thing. But watch the very, this was two weeks later. Watch how much better we got this kid. Two weeks later, there's two men in his zone. One, two in his zone. Now watch, two weeks later, look where he gets, okay? Boom, great job, great job. So you asked earlier, how, if he's only taking a step, how does he get around them? There you go, look how parallel that is, okay? So you're almost having to run around them. I don't, his right foot should have got a little more upfield, but in just two weeks, look how much better that kid got, okay? Watch him here. Watch him here. Poor job. Two weeks later. Really good job. Now I had another one over here highlighted on the right side. Bad technique gets caught up. Okay, let's watch this young man here. R, R1. Let's watch R1. Yeah, poor, poor technique. Look at this right foot. He doesn't take this step, okay? He doesn't take that step. Now, because, listen, because he fails to take this step, okay, I really believe you take this step and then this left step rip through this guy. Because he doesn't rip through him, okay, watch what happens. He gets tangled up. That defender does a really good job of not letting him off the ball. It's because he didn't fight. You got to fight there. You got to take those steps the right way. He doesn't do that, okay? He doesn't do that. All right. Let's see. R3 contain issue. Here's my contain guy. R3 should take step. Should be coming down this way. Remember, he's not going to turn his shoulders. He's not going to turn his shoulders until he's even with the ball carrier. Let's watch this contain issue we have here with R3. He takes the path of least resistance. It puts him out of place for contain making this move. So making that move right there, boom. He dips inside of him, taking the path of least resistance. Watch what happens, okay? That's a freaking nightmare. Because now, instead of my R3 being right about here where he should be, keeping this man inside of you, now he got my contained guy got sucked in. The ball's bouncing. He picks it up, and now I'm out of position. And we give up three yards. That pisses me off. So contained guy is critical. Is critical. You do not turn your shoulders. So the coaching point on this is you don't turn your shoulders. He sh should not be turning his shoulders until he's here to keep him inside of you so this bull crap doesn't happen. All right, let's see what the issue is here. The ball on or inside? Okay, here's another issue, okay? You'll see here we're punting from our 39 going in. Fourth and 10, fourth and 10, ball on the 39. When we're on the 40 or inside, on or inside the 40, okay, my contained guys, L3, R3, I am teaching those guys to run to the goal line get to the goal line to keep the ball inside. That doesn't happen here very well. Watch, watch what happens. Boom, man, look at that. I love it. He does a great job of faking these guys. Their eyes, they take their eyes off of their job. Their job, my contain guys, my contain guys should be lined up. L3, R3 should be sprinting to the end zone. That's their only job inside the 40 sprint to the end zone, their only job. Now, instead of that, we get a net gain of 19 yards on this freaking punt, and that takes me off, okay? So again, inside the 40, now some of you guys will never punt inside the 40, that's fine, okay? But if you do, look, the ball just bounced here. We should have been here and here to keep that ball inside. We weren't there. All right, bad, bad snap. And again, here's a glaring weakness. Let's watch it play. When you have a bad snap, you're screwed. You are screwed on a bad snap. There's nothing you can do. You have no time to do anything. 
And what I teach my returners, you, if you and I, we've all seen it. I teach my returners to fall on the ball. Why? Because so many times these returners who are in this position maybe once or twice a year, right? They pick it up. They try to kick it. They fumble it. We give up an easy six instead of at least getting our defense on the field. So, again, that's something I practice. My kid here does a great job of going to secure the football. I practice this with my kickers. So if you have a bad snap, you're absolutely screwed. All right, let's see what the issue is here. This was the hottest day I've ever coached in my life. My punter wears a freaking glove. Out of nowhere, my punter decides to wear a glove out on the field because his hands are dripping in sweat. And watch what happens. I thought this was just a funny thing to put in. He drops it. And he, he still gets it off, which was good. He still gets it off with his left foot. Boom. <laughs> but, man, I, I freaking I, – I didn't even notice he had a glove on until he came to the sideline. Coach, question? Yeah, there's a few here, Coach. Um, going back to personnel, uh, you know, do you put your best guy in R2 and then R, uh, L2 based on the threat and the C gap? I usually try to get my – do I put my best guy in L2? Yeah, usually at least my smartest guy I like getting there. I like putting my biggest guy in L2. Now, as soon as I say that, we see here this isn't necessarily my biggest guy. I just want these guys to be big, and I want them to be, have some football IQ. Uh, how do you ensure the front line gets their first step in unison with the snap? Great question. They got it. They got to, they got to look, that just comes with time. They got it. You'll see these guys all kind of peeking. Look at them. All these guys are kind of peeking at that ball. So I just, I go off that instead of a cadence for a lot of different reasons, but they all got to kind of peek out of the side and that just comes with practice. <laughs> it happens. It comes with practice. And then one more here, Coach. Have you ever taught a uh, front line to pull uh, like a guard on a trap as a way of getting across the face of the defender? No, I don't, I don't teach them that. Maybe I could. Again, I think it just comes down to practice time. Um, you definitely could. If, if you wanted to, you could do that. I've just never taught them that because they're not naturally offensive linemen. And what you saw in that video clip I just showed a little bit ago of that kid who was really bad in week one and we got him better by week three, that's a linebacker who just naturally learned how to do that. So – uh, that's where we are. So when we're, when we're backed up, guys, we change only one thing when punching from our end zone. Okay, the only thing we're going to change is to bring up the shield. The shield never, ever goes deeper than one yard into the end zone. Everything else stays the same. So if you're on the seven, you know, if you're on the seven yard line, heels at six, their heels are going to be at one. So basically, if you're inside the five, my, my uh, shield is always going to line up one yard deep into the end zone, never, ever deeper than that, or you're going to get too close to your punter, okay? All right, changing rules, L3. Let's look at L3 here, okay? So check this out. These guys, I think there's a Southwestern College down in San Diego. They do a great job here. This, I, I do the same thing with this guy here, okay? If you want to talk about how to block this thing, what, what this kid does is really, really good. It's a great scheme. Put this guy on an angle and have him attack inside. So what L3, okay, what L3 should be doing, and this is where I like to keep my rules very simple so we're not changing them up. And here's one of the change-ups, guys. I just obviously didn't coach it well enough. If there's no man in your zone, if there's no man in your zone, your blocking zone, so remember, his blocking zone is this way, right? but there's no man in his blocking zone. If there's no man in your blocking zone, then just block the man straight ahead of you. Block the man head up of you if there's no man in your blocking zone. So here on this scheme, okay, there's one man in his blocking zone, easy. Here, there's two men in his blocking zone, here and here, right? But there's nobody outside of him in his blocking zone, okay? So what, what we'll do is we teach these kids, and he just he jacks it up, but obviously I didn't coach it well enough if it's happening. He should have just blocked him here, okay, because there's no man in his blocking zone. No man in your blocking zone, block the man head up of you. Okay, but what, he do, what this guy does here is really good, you know. He comes in and attacks. He, now, what, what, the only thing I would have done if you're him is don't jump. Come here to try to block this thing. 
you know, but, but he doesn't do that. But anyway, that's one adjustment. That's one adjustment to be aware of guys is if there's nobody in your blocking zone, block the man head up of you. Okay. Okay. Why are we watching this one? Uh, pretty average. This is a pretty just average. So let's talk about who we're blocking here. Okay. Here R three. There's no man in his blocking zone. Okay. So what I would teach him is put some hands here. Just put some hands to help him. So here responsibilities are boom, boom, boom. Okay. This guy comes free to your shield. This guy has one man on his blocking. One man, one man. Easy. That's a pretty average setup right there. Okay. This guy, let's watch him first. He does a great job. Let's watch him slow-mo. Okay, let's watch his steps. Boom, good step. It's a little flat. Okay, it's a little flat. But does his, watch his second steps like textbook. Boom, getting upfield. He does a decent job. Remember, this is, a, this is a corner that we've taught to rip, and he does a decent job of it. That's all I need. Shoulder pad to shoulder pad. Make a collision. We're going to try to get that ball out in two seconds. Okay, let's watch him. Good step. That's a good job he does. I wish his head was up. Boom, just a collision. Okay, let's watch the left side. Let's watch the left side here. Good step. I don't like that he uses two hands. Uh, this kid uses two hands instead of ripping. Let's watch L2. L2, bad first step, bad first step. Again, he also puts two hands up on him instead of ripping. L3, freaking dancing over here. I wish I had better film of high school, end zone high school film, because high school guys just, I've gotten them to do just a much better job. But this is a pretty, you know, pretty good punt, pretty average, pretty average deal there. All right, great view. Let's go again, talking through these assignments. Okay, you got R3, he's got one man. R2 has one man. R1 has one man. He's coming free to the shield. L1 has one guy. L2 has one guy. L3 has nobody. Coach, what's up? A couple of questions here. Uh, <clears throat> if you get overload uh, from one side, do you ever zone that side? Do we ever zone that side? It's all zone. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I'll never move a guy. Um, overloads don't matter. Again, it doesn't matter how you line up because we're block my, my zone blocking assignment does not change at all, okay? It doesn't change. You're going to block your zone no matter how everything else is lined up. So, yeah. And then um, you touched on it earlier, but when backed up and kicking out of your end zone, uh, are the rules you give your front line uh, – are these the rules you give you front line, or does it all stay the same even when the, the return team brings uh, all pressure? I know you said don't, we don't, you don't see it often. Don't see it often. We're gonna, the, the blocking assignments don't change at all. The blocking assignments don't change at all. Just the alignment of the shield changes. Okay, so let's talk through. Let's look at this one at a time here quickly. Let's watch L3. Decent job. Remember, he has nobody outside of him. Good release. Let's watch L2. Should be crashing right through. Okay, so here's a good thing to point out. L2, good release. This kid is going to turn and run with them. So he just runs, and usually he'll get, he's going to be him off. Good. Let's watch L, L1 here. Let's watch his steps. Good first step. Good first step. Second step I don't like, and I don't like he doesn't rip through he doesn't rip through him because he doesn't see a threat there, but I don't like that. He should be ripping right through him here, okay? Let's watch the right side. Right, let's watch the right side, R1. Don't know what the puke he's doing. He should be taking a step and ripping through this man. R2, step, no pressure. He does a good job. Let's watch R3 here. I would like to I would like R3 to take a better step here. Again, rip through this guy. He he doesn't necessarily do that, but pretty good job overall there. Boom, love it. 
Okay. Now, one thing we haven't talked about yet, guys, uh, I wanted this clip to talk about it. The head coach I worked for here, he always wanted me to kick it to the sidelines. I don't like that. I just kick it straight down the field. I don't like directional kicking because a lot of punters can't do it very well at the high school level. Okay. But, and then you got to change all your coverage assignments, which I don't like your lane assignments, how you go down the field. Okay. But head coach is the head coach. He makes the decision. So we, we kick it to the, uh, to the sideline a lot of times, which is what you'll see here. Boom. Nowhere to go. Love it. And this is why I will put this clip in here. This is why I don't like kicking to the sidelines. We lose maybe 10 yards right here. I don't think there's enough to gain. Okay. Because we kick it to the sideline, my kicker shanks it a little bit. Okay. And now it's a 35 yard punt instead of a 43 yard punt, which is what this kid averaged. Okay. So, you know, because when, when they kick to the sidelines, but whatever. All right. Proper alignment is key. Look how big this dude is. This is the type of guy I like having in there. This shows you, you know, decent alignment. Their heels are at seven. They're going to step up to six. He's way too close. He's at 12 yards. They're at seven. They should be closer. They should be at six, okay, because this is two yards. This is seven yards. So they're too close. And he, my, this is my backup punter. He's only at 12. Holy smokes. So we see how close this comes, guys. We see how close this comes to kicking it right in the back of our shield because my backup idiot, I say that with all love and respect, doesn't line up deep enough, okay? That becomes a little bit of a headache right there. What the puke is this guy doing? What the puke is he doing? He's my long snapper. Supposed to run right to and set up right in front of the returner. Instead, I'll just go do my own thing. I'll go. Welcome to junior college football. What the puke is he doing? I don't know. All right, let's see here what we got. A um, few more clips, guys. Let me go back, see why we're watching this one. All right, most dangerous man right here. Again, YouTube 8 Laces channel. Second man in the B gap. Let's watch him. Becomes the most dangerous guy. Second guy in the B-gap, okay? When there's two men in your zone, run through the outside one. He does not do that, does he? Let's see. Yeah, he does. He collides them at least. He collides them, so that's good. At least a collision. Look, if there's no collision, he blocks this thing. So if you can't get around them, at least collide them. Again, the speed at that level something else. Okay, but if you can't get around them, at least collide them. Okay, blocking the widest man on the LOS. Way too many return yards allowed here. So this guy's pretty wide. I think he's he's going to be too wide. We don't really need to block him because he's he's a whole body outside of our imaginary R4. And, uh, you know, he's not, he's never going to get to the ball that wide. Okay. Well, let's talk about why we gave up so many return yards here. Special teams is all about real estate, way too much open real estate. Okay. On this right-hand side. So why didn't my guys not get off the ball and get down there quick enough? Okay. He's preconceived. He's too worried about him. He's too worried about him instead of getting down the field, get down the stinking field. Okay, I want to show you guys some of these bad clips. Too many clinicians just told us to show the good stuff. This is a bad clip because, look, check this out. R3 should be going now. R1 should be going now and watch both of them. R1 is here dancing. God, pisses me off. He's here dancing with this kid. He's here worried about this kid that will never get there. And so check this out. Look how deep those two guys are right now. That's why we lose this play. That's why we lose this play. My guys are not in position. Check this out. Contain guy, remember, his rule is don't turn yourself until you're even with the ball carrier. He turns your shoulders far too early, gets sucked in way too early because he should be going 
He should not be turning those shoulders until he's even with the ball carrier. He gets sucked in. Boom. And now we come outside of there. Now we give up way too many yards because our ball carrier, now my punter makes a tackle. Get you a punter who's a little out there, a little crazy. This punter, if there's any guys from around SoCal listening, he's from Barstow. That's how a Barstow kid goes and makes a tackle as a punter. I love it. All right, closest call of the year was this. I think this is L.A. Valley College. Do a great job. Important to have an eye in the sky. L.A. Valley College does a great job, and they almost get this thing because I wish I had the end zone view of this, but we don't touch this kid at all, okay? We don't touch this kid at all. Second man in the B gap, don't touch him at all. Almost blocks it. Almost blocks it, but even still, almost blocking it. He doesn't. We get decent field. Whoop! We get decent field position there. What the heck just happened? Thing of beauty. We already showed you that clip. All right, that's it, guys. That's all I got. Um, again, if you go up here, uh, you'll see a bunch of resources right here that I've got. Again, uh, fifty percent off some of these things. Seven bucks. Uh, you get that some good stuff today there. A ton of resources here, guys. Go check out all that stuff. Coach, you got some questions? Uh, guys, I'm sorry for a, going long, too. Coach. No, no, you're, you're good. Yeah, if anybody has uh, any questions. Your favorite fake? Uh, I get that all the time. Guys, your favorite fake is not, not what you like to run. It's what the defense is giving you. So my fake is going to depend on what they're doing, what they're bringing. Um, my fa probably my favorite one, my go-to is – we call three out and a lot of times what they're doing now okay is there the defense is turning and running with your guys and so when he turns and runs with your three if you've got like you know five yards to go we teach our three on the right side because most punters are right-handed well our three okay he will run one yard past the sticks he'll run a little out so now what's important if you call our three is you can't go downfield, obviously, right? So L3, L2, R1, R2 are all staying down, um, are, are now blocking at the line of scrimmage. My shield is now doing the, their same thing. So what I do on that, guys, is I teach them all to make it look like the regular punt. So we're all taking our steps, just those five inside guys, five interior guys are not going downfield. But my punter is throwing a pass. And then the other secret is this. I'll put, I'll put my punter up to like 12 yards maybe even sneak them up to like 11. And now we're throwing a, a five yard or six yard out because of how that they're, they're treating. They're not respecting R1 as a wide receiver. And so R1 is running one yard past the sticks, a little out is one thing I like to do when they, when they turn and run with uh, the, those guys, frontline seven. You know, that's one of my favorites. Um, a lot of times now guys aren't even coming. They're, they're bringing maybe just four dudes mm -hmm. and they're playing real soft to go set up a return. So if I see they're playing real soft to set up a return, um, you know, we'll snap it right to my punter and we'll just go right up the middle. So right up the middle of the field, um, we'll just run right behind that shield. But guys, I'm not a real big fake guy, to be honest with you. You know, if I'm not a real big fake guy, I'm pretty conservative there to be very honest, because if, you know, a lot of times if you're punting the ball, you're in a bad spot, you know. Um, but but those are two of my favorites. Again, I think I got 10 punt, 10, 10 that I've used over the years and 10 that I like the most I've got in that shield punt manual. Yep, there you go. Anybody else, any other questions for Coach? One, one or two may pop in. But, Coach, I just want to uh, thank you again, man, for, for jumping on and – and uh, obviously giving a great presentation on the, the little bread and butter right here, man. That shield yeah, punt it is. is definitely yep. Your, yep. definitely your deal, man. And like you know, I, I like I said before, I you know I have I personally have the book. Um, if you don't and you're interested in, in going to shield, man, it's, it's it's a great resource that you can use. A lot of this uh, the the uh, slides that were in there you can find in the book, so it's it, it maps it out really well. Um, you know, easy to install. You know, just obviously like you said, the the, the black rules stay the same. It's it's definitely beneficial uh, I feel it's you know for, for the high school level I love running in at our school so yeah you know and what I got in that book we got the first five days of practice we line up exactly how to install it and all that 
um, as well. So, guys, if you got any questions on it, hit me up on Twitter. Send me an email. You know, during the season, I I, uh, I got a couple options as well to help consult you with this thing. There's a couple coaches who, you know, I, I watch every punt of the year um, with them. Obviously, I, my time's valuable, so I charge them for that a little fee. But I'm also don't mind. I help guys all the time, man. When they're installing this, they'll add me to their huddle in August. When they just install it, I'll watch some clips, give some feedback. Um, you know, there's a Canadian Football League team that that hires me to help help them put this thing in. So I, I don't mind helping it off. It's a couple times, you know, uh, hey, coach, can you look at this? Or, hey, coach, we had this thing blocked. You know, hit me up, reach out to me, send me the clip. I'll tell you exactly what's going on with that thing because um, I, I love the system and I, I'm here to help you guys out. Um, so send me that stuff. I'll help to diagnose why something got blocked. It's always – it's pretty easy for me to figure it out right away. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it's easy to do. So – let me know what questions you have as things go along, as things progress. Absolutely, Coach. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks again, man, for jumping on. And, and once again, guys, you know, you know, Coach's uh, contact information is there. Feel free to reach out um, and find out more about this stuff. And, you know, once again, man, tremendous job. Appreciate you jumping back on. Uh, hey, thank you for us. hosting, Coach. Appreciate what you're doing, man. Hey, absolutely, absolutely. Appreciate all you guys for, for tuning in as well. Um, big, a big thank you and a shout-out goes to all the coaches who are continually – uh, learning and growing together, man. It's been awesome.